What's growing on, gardeners? It's Thursday, February 1st, and it is a beautiful winter evening here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about pruning fruit trees for maximum productivity while keeping them at a manageable size. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Pruning a fruit tree is one of the most difficult things for new gardeners to do because it just seems so difficult to chop up our precious babies like that. But I'm here to tell you that proper pruning does not harm a tree. It actually reinvigorates it and it can lead to a healthy, more productive tree in the long run. Lesson number one, why do we prune fruit trees? We prune fruit trees to keep the tree as small as possible while increasing fruit production. And to understand that, you need to understand that it is basically the purpose of every species to reproduce and perpetuate that species. And fruit trees are no different. If you leave a fruit tree completely unpruned and let it grow the way it's going to want to grow naturally, it's going to produce enough fruit that it feels comfortable that it reproduced adequately for the season, but it's going to put most of its energy into vigor. So if you never prune your fruit trees, you're going to wind up with the largest, most jumbled mass of a tree possible with mediocre production. With proper pruning, you will keep the tree form smaller, which is ideal for backyard gardeners, and actually dramatically increase the production. So you'll get more fruit on a smaller tree. Lesson number two, when do we prune fruit trees? Well, that depends on the type of fruit tree that you're growing. For deciduous fruit trees, which are trees that lose all of their leaves and go dormant in the winter time, like apples, figs, persimmons, peaches, plums, well, you want to prune them when they're at peak dormancy, and that is going to be during the winter time. And when you prune these fruit trees, when they're in a dormant leafless state like this, it is low stress for the fruit trees, so they recover very quickly. Evergreen fruit trees like avocados, citrus, mangoes, and other tropical and subtropical fruit trees that do not lose their leaves, since they don't go through a period of dormancy, the best time to prune them, generally speaking, is right after you harvest the fruit off of them. Now, obviously, you don't want to prune your fruit trees when they're loaded up with fruit that aren't mature, because if you prune off that wood, then you will have a whole bunch of fruit that isn't ripe and basically worthless to you. And you also don't want to prune them too late after harvest because it's the new wood that will form for the new season that is going to flower and fruit for you the next season. So if you wait too long after harvest, the tree will not have enough time to grow new budwood to flower and fruit for the new season, and you may skip a year with no fruit. So the safest time to prune is right after you harvest all of the fruit off. That way you're able to actually pick all of the fruit that is mature, and the tree has the maximum amount of time to grow new budwood for the new season to flower and fruit. Lesson number three, how much should we prune our fruit trees every year? Well, for the overwhelming majority of fruit trees, like this persimmon tree that you see right here, the general rule of thumb is something like a quarter to a third of the overall volume of the tree. That will give it good enough airflow and better light penetration without creating so much stress on the tree from chopping it back too much that it can easily recover and fruit in the same seasons. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. If you have a long enough growing season, things like figs can be cut down significantly, more than halfway because they generate so much new fruiting wood that the more you cut them back, the more new wood they grow and the new wood is what makes new fruit. But again, generally speaking, if you don't know, have the quarter to a third of the overall size rule in your head. Lesson number four, what tools do you need to prune fruit trees? Well, generally speaking, you want two different tools. You want a pair of bypass pruning shears, and you also want a small hand saw like this Japanese pool saw right here. And you want to use the bypass pruning shears for wood that is less than one half inch in diameter, and for anything larger, you'll want a small fine hand saw like this. And if you need to buy tools like this, I will link to both of these directly down in the video description. I'll place some links in there for you. They are both very affordable and they work great. And lesson number five, different types of pruning cuts. There are three pruning cuts that you can make to your tree. Thinning cuts, heading cuts, and bench cuts, also known as drop crotching. 
Thinning cuts will remove an entire branch from the tree. The reason why we perform thinning cuts is to increase airflow, increase light penetration to the internal canopy of the tree, and also to remove any dead branches or branches that are growing crisscross inside the tree itself. Heading cuts are used to shape the tree and encourage new growth and flowering at strategic places. Heading cuts are reinvigorating to the tree and they greatly increase the amount of young, vibrant fruiting wood, creating more buds and flowers for enhanced fruit set. The way fruit trees grow is this. All of the growth hormones collect in the terminal bud, which is the tip that is all the way out in the front here. So, left up to its own devices, this branch is going to keep growing and growing, and eventually it will produce flowers on this new wood, more than likely at the end of that terminal bud. But if I were to head this, this branch right here and say cut it back right here, what that's going to do is all of the growth hormone is going to try and collect here where it normally would, but there is no terminal bud. So that growth hormone is then going to reinvigorate and probably cause it to branch out here, here, and here in three different places. So whereas before we only had one location where we would probably get flowers for new fruit for the new season, we will have this budding out in all different directions and grow new wood here, grow new wood down here, and new wood over there. So that is three different chances for flowers to form on the new growth of the season instead of only one. In orchard culture, they call this tipping. They go around and they cut off all of the terminal buds for the new season because that's going to force lots of new wood to form in all different directions. So that is going to double, if not triple, the amount of new wood growing on the tree for that year, greatly enhancing the amount of locations where it can potentially flower and therefore set fruit. So in many cases, when you cut back and tip your trees, you'll actually get more flowers and enhanced fruit set than if you just let them grow on their own. And finally, bench cuts or drop crotching is a method of reducing the size of a fruit tree overall by cutting back a main branch or a central leader to one of the lateral branches and then they will take over and become the new dominant leaders. So for example, here you can see the main central leaders of this persimmon tree that are growing up way tall much taller than I want. Now, as I mentioned before, the growth hormone is going up that central leader and collecting in the terminal bud because that's how trees want to grow. They want to grow up and out. So because this dominant central leader is taking all of the energy away from the lower parts of the tree, these branches over here are not going to be able to grow as much. If I were to cut all of this down, that would then reestablish a lower point on the tree. We could create a new crotch here, and if I cut all of this wood away, then these smaller branches would now become the dominant central leaders because they'd be the highest up points on the tree. So by cutting this down, I would re-establish a new growth point and establish a new central leader. Now that I've explained to you all of the principles behind pruning, I will show you an actual demonstration. Looking at this tree right here, it can be overwhelming just to figure out where to begin. And it is easiest to start with the thinning cuts because the thinning cuts are going to remove entire branches and greatly open up the tree and then once you remove those branches you can kind of figure out a methodology from there and we're going to start by removing any growth that is growing crisscross within the canopy of the tree and also removing the dead branches because all of that stuff is very easy to find so for example all of this wispy stuff that's just growing in the middle of the tree we want to keep the tree as an open canopy that has lots of airflow so we don't want all this stuff growing in diagonal patterns across the tree same thing with up here. All of this stuff hanging down, it basically does us no good. It's growing into the tree. We never want to see any wood that is growing into the canopy. So this right here, it's growing into the canopy. Let's remove that. Again, we want to keep the canopy nice and open for good airflow and light penetration. This is growing into the canopy. We have to get rid of that. We have to get rid of this. We have to get rid of this. So once we remove all those small wispy branches, it gives us better visibility inside the tree. And what do you see here? Well, this branch right here, which is much larger, this is growing into the canopy. So we really need to get that off. I'm going to have to clean that up with the handsaw because it's just too thick for me to cut with the bypass pruners. I also don't want growth growing into my fence right here. So I need to cut this back as well and also cut off some of these smaller, wispier branches that are growing out this way into my fence. 
from this angle, you can see how this branch right here is growing out in the opposite direction that I want it to grow. It's growing into the canopy of the tree. This is the kind of growth that we need to remove. Now that we've removed a lot of those wispy branches, we have much better visibility into the center of the tree. Now this is a branch that is growing outward. This is something that we want to preserve, but this branch is growing inward into the center of the canopy. We have to remove that because that is going to block our airflow. Same thing with this branch right here. It is pointing out, growing into the center of the canopy. So we need to shear that one off. And this one right here, growing into the center of the canopy, it's growing this way. That is a no-go. So that comes off. This one right here, growing outward, that has to come off. Now here I've noticed that this branch right here is growing completely into the fence. This is not the direction I want it to go. And it's also very knotted and it looks like it has some damage on it. So I really want to get rid of this branch. It's not doing me any good growing out like that. And I think it will actually better balance the tree the way it's currently weighted. So I'm going to take this entire branch off Look at that. This entire branch that I just cut off was dead. I thought it felt funny. It felt lightweight and it sounded hollow. This is a dead branch. Now that the canopy is more open, I'm starting to see things more clearly. And one thing I noticed is this branch right here more than likely has to go because it is growing up through the center of the canopy as well as this one behind it also has to go because it's the branch behind it that is actually the leader. And all of this stuff is basically just growing into the center of the canopy, which is not what we want. So I actually have to remove those two internal branches. And the last thinning cuts that I want to make is the junk that is basically pointing down to the ground. We don't want fruit that's in contact with the ground. It attracts pests and things like that. So I've now completed all of the thinning cuts. I've removed all of the dead wood. I have all of the crisscrossing branches that are growing into the center removed. And I have a much more wide open canopy for better airflow. And I've also gotten rid of all of the wood here that was growing into the fence. So now I have no branches that are pointing towards the back of the fence. Now that we're done performing all of our thinning cuts, we need to make our heading cuts and our bench cuts if necessary. It's entirely possible you won't need to use the bench cut technique. But one thing that you'll notice about this tree is it is getting way too tall. Those branches are starting to reach up to the sky. And the last thing I want to do is have to bring out a ladder to harvest my fruits. So I'm going to start cutting back those really tall leaders that are pointing straight upward. And this will be a great opportunity to show you what a bench cut is. Right here, you can see one of my main central leaders. It's one of the tallest branches on the tree and it is growing up towards the sky. Now, as I mentioned, the terminal bud on top of this central leader is collecting most of the growth hormone, forcing the tree to grow upward, which is suppressing this lateral branch because it's way below where the growth hormone is going to collect. Now, if I were to perform a bench cut or drop crotch the tree, what I would do is I would remove this entire central leader right here and cut it back to this point and what that would do is that would drop the crotch of the tree and this would then become the new central leader because it would then be the tallest point at this point of the tree so this would actually wind up collecting all of the growth hormone and growing upward that would be an example of a bench cut however i'm not going to do that because i don't want my central leader jutting all the way out here i like the way this is growing so i'm going to do this instead so what i want to do is i I want this right here to maintain the status as the central leader, but I don't want it to be as tall. Now, these two branches right here are basically redundant and competing against each other. And this one, the smaller one, is growing out towards my fence. So the first thing we want to do is take that down. And now that that redundant leader has been removed, we want to establish a place to cut or head this central leader right here. It's very important that you look at the orientation of the buds. I have a bud here, but it's pointing out that way. I don't want the, the tree to bud here and grow out that way. 
there's a bud up here, but it's growing out this way. It's pointing in that direction. I don't want this branch growing into my neighbor's yard. So what I do have is right here, there is a bud that is pointing out that way into my yard. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to cut in between the two bud nodes. There's a bud here and there's a bud here. So two separate nodes. We are going to make our cut on an angle right in the center. Now we have a situation in our hands. While I perfectly cut this branch right here, this branch is now way low compared to all of the other leaders on the tree. And as we established, the growth hormones collect a terminal buds at the highest point up or the furthest points out. So this tree branch that I just made will be suppressed if I allow all of these other branches to tower over it. So what I need to do is I need to take all the other leaders on the tree and I need to even them out in perfect symmetry so everything is roughly the same height and I need to pick buds that are jutting out in the proper direction in order to do that. So I have a bud that is sticking up here and this is where checking the tree over carefully pays big dividends to make sure you don't make any cuts that aren't exactly where you want them to be. I want these buds that are jutting out here and here to leaf out this branch coming out inside into the canopy of the tree has now become redundant and has to be removed. This branch on the back side needs to be cut. This branch is now too tall and needs to be cut down. Same thing with this branch. And again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a tree where all of the leaders are roughly at the same height and the nearest bud below the cut is pointing in the direction that we want. So for this leader, we wouldn't want this top bud here because it would grow out into the center of the canopy. We don't want this back bud that is going to grow out into my neighbor's yard. We want this side bud, which is going to grow off into my yard, but behind the tree and not interfere with the canopy. So we simply cut right above that and that will become the new dominant bud that will grow into a new branch. And now our fruit tree has been beautifully pruned. All of the dead branches have been removed. All of the crisscrossing branches that were interfering inside the canopy have been removed. It has been opened up for excellent airflow, great light penetration, and everything has been pruned so the branches are at the same height. So there won't be a central leader that has apical dominance that will dominate the rest of the tree and throw it off balance. So we will have ourselves a nice, symmetric, and hopefully well-fruiting fruit tree. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to toughen up some of these weaker branches. These weak branches, they angle down towards the ground and they're pretty thin. So when they flower and they load up with fruit, they will be weighed down like you see right here and likely snap. So for that reason, we want to cut these branches back and I want to cut them down so they will be much stronger and I want to cut them to a bud that is sticking out in an appropriate direction. So this one is pointing out somewhat. So we're going to cut this back and now this branch is going to be a whole lot stronger. I'm also going to do this, this is called tipping, to this branch right here. We'll cut it back to right here because now this may butt out in two or three different locations and flower in a few locations instead of just one. And we'll give the tree one pass over here because this long extending branch here looks pretty uh, weak. So we will also tip that right here to strengthen it up and hopefully encourage more new growth for additional fruiting. And if you're wondering what to do with all of that fruit wood that I just cut off, you could graft onto a rootstock if you wish. So right here I have an American persimmon seed grown rootstock that I have an extra of. So I'm going to cut the rootstock flush and then I have a piece of the scion wood that is about the same diameter, if not slightly smaller. And then we will use one of these grafting tools in order to punch a cut into the rootstock and then we will punch an equal cut into the scion that will slip right over and we will carefully make sure that the cambium layers which are the green layers line up and touch adequately and then once that green cambium layer makes contact we are going to take some power film and then we will start covering over that graft then we will cut the scion wood above one of the buds because we only need that one bud to bud out. And then we will slide down a rubber band that I quadrupled over in order to hold that graft tightly into place. 
and in probably about a month or two on my warm sunroom, it will eventually wake up as the tree wakes up from dormancy. And then this is really the ideal time to start grafting in the spring or late winter when sap flow is just starting to return to your deciduous trees again. If you're curious where I got this grafting equipment, I will make sure to place direct links down in the video description for all of the equipment that I use. And that right there is almost everything that you need to know about pruning trees. Now, why do I say almost? Well, that's because there is only one way to learn how to prune a fruit tree, and that is to actually go out and do it. I know it's scary. People are afraid to take that step. Step, but sitting and watching video after video after video isn't going to help you. Watch a couple of videos from sources that you know and trust that are pretty good and then go out and experiment. And I promise you as you do that it will start becoming easier and easier. You'll begin to know what to look for and as you learn you gain that knowledge through experience you won't be so afraid of doing it anymore. And remember, even if you make a mistake, the fruit tree will grow back. They are self-correcting. So if you over prune, they will recover. It may cost you a little bit of fruit for that year, but again, the next year they'll be just fine and learn from those mistakes as you go. Pruning is an iterative process. That means you need to go in with a general plan and then shape it as you do it. There's no way to prune an entire fruit tree in your mind. You have to do something, take a step back, see what you have, and then do another step. So it's going to be in little steps here and there, baby steps, not one big hedge job. You're not pruning a hedge here. So as long as you understand those concepts and you're willing to get your hands a little bit dirty, you will get better at pruning. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful and you feel more confident to go out and start pruning fruit trees. If you did find this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the equipment that I featured in this video for pruning fruit trees and grafting fruit trees, I will place direct links to all of them down in the video description. And you can also look at my Amazon storefront in the video description, which has all of the equipment I use in real life in my garden and while you're there check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel thank you all so much for watching and i hope to see all of you again on the next video well we just got back from a week-long vacation and dale stayed with the grandpa and he had a sleepover and he had such a good time going on so many walks every single day and getting so many treats from grandma and grandpa but he is so relieved to be back home, back in his own bed, because he is king of the castle. Dale has such a good time when we go on vacation, but these seven-day trips are just a little bit much for him, right? We are so happy to have our boy back.